The defeat of anti-Semitism is not only a Jewish issue, it is an issue for all societies and it is essential for the welfare of all of the human family. It is my honor to invite Ambassador David Fridman to deliver remarks on behalf of the President of the United States of Amer America. Please, Ambassador. Thank you very much. I was just reminding Tamar the day we met, uh, she was covering what I think a lot of people thought at the time was the, uh, the losing side of the uh, last presidential campaign. And uh, we had a chance to meet there. The night turned out uh, differently than, uh, than expected, but it was, it, was, it was quite a night. And I recall fondly my uh, discussion with Tamar that night. I also want to, um, I also want to congratulate, uh, I, I, I missed her last name, but congratulate Chagit, uh, whose voice is absolutely magnificent. Those songs were spectacular. And um, much as I love to listen to Ron Lauder and Naftali Bennett, those, uh, those songs were, uh, were really something. Um, thank, you, uh, thank you so much for giving me the honor to address you on behalf of the Trump administration in the presence of such uh, dignitaries as Minister Naftali Bennett, Minister Ayelet Shaked, Ambassador Ronald Lauder, who is truly one of the great philanthropists of the 21st century in terms of enhancing and preserving Jewish life, especially in, in Europe. Uh, I'd like to welcome Ambassador Nikolai Miladinov uh, from the United Nations and thank him for all that he does. And I'd like to welcome all of you, uh, each one of you in your own way, participating in this conference and doing so much to fight the forces of racism and bigotry against the Jewish people. Uh, I am grateful for your efforts, uh, as is President Trump and the entire Trump administration. Uh, I'd like to applaud whoever uh, chose the title of this conference, uh, the Global Forum for Combating Anti-Semitism. <coughs> Excuse me. Combating, I think, is the right verb. Usually when we speak about efforts to uh, end the disease, and uh, make no mistake about it, anti-Semitism is a disease, and it's a virulent disease, but we speak about eradicating it. We eradicated uh, smallpox, we eradicated polio. Uh, we hope one day to eradicate AIDS, perhaps to eradicate the latest uh, deadly strain of influenza. But we don't speak about eradicating anti-Semitism, and I think that's probably the right approach. Uh, eradication is probably a bridge too far. As we approach the Passover holidays, uh, we can't help but be reminded of the famous words of the Passover Haggadah, written somewhere between 1700 and 2000 years ago. Behold lor vador, omdim aleinu l'chalotenu. In every generation, they will rise up against the Jewish people. The authors of the Haggadah did not see anti-Semitism as capable of being eradicated some 2,000 years ago, and regrettably, today, neither do I. But combating anti-Semitism, combating anti-Semitism we can do. That is our sacred responsibility. It is a task we assumed from our parents, and it is something we must all bequeath to our children. Behold Dar Vadar in every generation, we must fight anti-Semitism in whatever strain this awful disease has presented itself or has evolved into. I wish I could say the old anti-Semitism was a thing of the past, the anti-Semitism of the Shoah, the anti-Semitism of the Ku Klux Klan. The old anti-Semitism once practiced in my home city of Bal Harbor, Florida, which until the 1960s prohibited home sales to anyone who was not of the Caucasian race or whose blood was 25% or more of the Hebrew nation. I should add a word of optimism here. Pearl Harbor has since become a flourishing, diverse, largely Jewish community that has adopted the strongest anti-BDS platform of any municipality in the entire United States. So we have, we have a template for moving forward. 
The old anti-Semitism is there. It's still in Europe. It's still in South America. It's still, regrettably, uh, in the United States. And with the internet, the old anti-Semitism has a distribution channel that the old anti-Semites, like, like Father Coughlin, if those of you remember him, could only have dreamed of. But the old anti-Semitism faces challenges today like never before. That same internet also exposes anti-Semitism for all its ugliness. And we can recoil, be revulsed by its evil and by its hatred. With the state of Israel as the ultimate guarantor of refuge for those persecuted by anti-Semitism, and with so much sunlight available to disinfect this disease, I worry about the old anti-Semitism, but I never doubt we will prevail in our fight against it. The new anti-Semitism worries me a bit more. It is the irrational, deceitful, and insidious vilification of Israel and its supporters under the guise of political commentary. It is just a cleverly repackaged form of hatred against the Jewish people. There are places in Manhattan, where I worked for 35 years, where you could attend a cocktail party and say, I hate Jews, and you would be politely escorted to the door. But if you said, isn't it a shame that after the Jews survived the Holocaust, they turned into Nazis themselves against the Palestinians? If you said that, you might be offered another drink and invited to hold court on your interesting point of view. Unlike other nations, unlike other peoples, there is simply no political correctness when it comes to Israel and the Jewish people. Now, Israel is far from perfect. Israel's can, Israelis can and do debate, sometimes without end, on how to balance Israel's sometimes competing interests of its commitment to human rights and its commitment to the security of its citizens. But that is an open, democratic, and intellectually honest discussion. It's a discussion that virtually every free nation engages in these days. To accuse Israel of Nazism, apartheid, or institutional bigotry because of well-intentioned, good-faith efforts to protect its inhabitants against terrorism is to be an anti-Semite, plain and simple. Now, that would be the case even looking at this issue in isolation. But it is even more self-evident when one compares the criticism of Israel with the stark absence of criticism of so many racist, religiously intolerant, misogynistic, and homophobic regimes that conveniently evade scrutiny. The hypocrisy, my friends, can be breathtaking. This morning, I observed something that was unfortunate and obvious. Over the past weekend, three Israelis were murdered. Two of them were murdered uh, defending their country. Two of them were young soldiers. They were murdered by a, a car that rammed into them, killed them in cold blood. And then on Sunday, uh, a 32-year-old father of four was stabbed to death in the old city of Jerusalem. I observed this morning that three Jews were killed in cold blood by Palestinian terrorists. And the reaction from the Palestinian Authority was deafening. No condemnation whatsoever. I pointed that out without further adjectives, without further commentary. Abu Mazen chose to respond while, Mr. while Ambassador Lauder was speaking. I had a chance to see his response on my iPhone. His response was to refer to me as a son of a dog. Anti-Semitism or political discourse? Not for me to judge. I leave that all up to you. I think now our biggest issue with regard in the United States with respect to anti-Semitism is on college campuses. Pro-Israel students are under siege. Pro-Israel professors are not getting tenure. Now, I went to Columbia University in the 1970s. While there, I took a course 
in Literature given by Professor Edward Said. I don't know who remembers him. He was one of the intellectual founders of the Palestinian movement. And even as a dumb undergraduate, he spoke with me about Israel. And while I could not have disagreed with him more on his point of view, the conversation was respectful, it was civil, and it was thoughtful. Fast forward to 2007, and my alma mater, Columbia University, that my parents worked day and night to afford to send me there, I'm not sure they got their money's worth, my alma mater hosted a speech by then President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who threatened to wipe Israel off the map and was in the process of building the capacity to do so. His rhetoric was as offensive as any world leader since Adolf Hitler. Ahmadinejad was not embraced by Colombia, but he was cordially invited and he was treated respectfully, far more so than his pro-Israeli speakers in, in the current days. If you fast forward another 10 years to 2017, Dani Danone, Israel's current ambassador to the United Nations, hardly a controversial figure in Israeli politics, was shouted down when he addressed the students of Columbia. This is Columbia University in the city of New York. New York all by itself is the third largest Jewish community in the world. And you can multiply that by colleges and universities throughout the United States, throughout Europe, and elsewhere. Now, we never want to interfere with academic freedom, but we must bring an end to academic hypocrisy. So on behalf of President Trump and his administration, I wish all of you the greatest of success at this conference. And of course, in the broader quest to successfully combat anti-Semitism. President Trump, as those who have preceded him, has forcefully denounced anti-Semitism in all its venal terms. But beyond words, the president has taken action, an action that at attacked head-on the double standard that Israel faces all too often in proclaiming Jerusalem to be the capital of the state of Israel. Until that proclamation, every nation in the world but one, the Jewish nation, had the right to choose its own capital by itself. No longer, President Trump has leveled the field. It was a shot right through the heart of the new anti-Semitism, and let's hope it is just the beginning. Thank you so much for having me. God bless all of you. God bless the State of Israel and God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much.